What is going on everybody? Sean Daniel here with Guitar Control and today we're going to up our fingerstyle game by doing one really easy progression and two different patterns so you can kind of start incorporating a little bit of variation into your acoustic guitar or electric guitar really uh, fingerstyle patterns. So make sure you click the link below because I got the tabs for all of these and basically what we're going to do is two separate versions of the same thing. So the first one's going to sound like this. And the second one is going to sound like this. And the beautiful thing about it is we're not using any bar chords, so really it can be a challenge for some people who are first starting out finger style, but we're going to talk a little bit about technique, a little bit about the chord voicings, and just how you can kind of make general open chords sound a little bit prettier. Now this is going to be in the key of C, everybody's favorite key. And uh, we've got four chords going on, okay? Now the chords are actually gonna be C major, D minor, E minor, and F major. But we're not gonna play them traditional cowboy chord open style, like you may have seen before. We're actually gonna use different chord voicings that will kind of be glued together by almost a, a pedal tone or something like that. But let's just jump into the very first one. This is gonna be a C major chord but with one kind of variation. So I've got my pointer finger on the root note C, third fret on the A string. My ring finger has the fifth note on the D string. So right there, that's a power chord, okay? A C and a G. Now, the open G string, I'm just gonna have ring out. So this is gonna be the same note, back to back. And then my pinky is gonna grab the E, the fifth fret on the B string. So we have root note, we have two consecutive Gs, and then the third, the major third, E. Okay? Now the important thing about playing this uh, finger style, the way we're going to do it, is we're going to assign each of these four strings uh, a finger on your hand, right? So in your picking hand, I want your thumb to be the A string, your pointer finger, the D string, your middle finger, the G string, and your ring finger, the B string, okay? Now what this is really going to help us do is kind of gain a little bit of finger independence because that is really one of the, the primary principles of being able to play good finger style guitar, okay? And this is a really easy one because we're just gonna do them in a row. There's not gonna be any like switching around. It's just gonna be straight on down the line, okay? Thumb, index, middle, ring. A, D, G, B, as far as the strings go. And we're just gonna repeat that four times in a row. One, two, three, Four. And the cool thing is you may already hear that is that open G that's ringing out is going to kind of start gluing the rest of these chords that we're going to get to in a second together. Because G is arguably the second most important note in the key of C. That's why a C and a G together make that really strong sounding power chord, the relationship between a root note and a key and its fifth C, D, E, F, G. Those are notes in the key of C. It's really powerful and this is a good example of why. All right. So we've just got in order, A, D, G, B, the names of the strings, four times in a row, real steady. Your right hand is only going to do this, or your picking hand if you're lefty. That's it. You can just kind of jam on that the whole time. It's going to sound great. Now, we're going to go two frets higher to get to that D minor. You could do it open traditional D minor. But I want to keep our fingers on the exact same string. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this exact same shape, move it down two frets, and then replace your pinky with your middle finger, which is now going to be the sixth fret of the B string, okay? Now, this might look like a D minor bar chord shape that you may have seen previously on the A string, but we're going to make it even easier by just lifting your pinky up. So it's like a D minor chord with a G. All right, now, you know, this is actually gonna give it a different name of the chord, but we're still thinking of it as a D minor chord, but with this kind of holdover from the last chord, this open G string, everything else is gonna be the same. Okay, so maybe you wanna just start by going back and forth between these two, the C. To the D.
Really easy, the next one's just two frets higher. Now I'm on the seventh fret. Now you might have noticed already that this open G note uh, kind of sounds a little bit different when we get to this chord because now it's really a, a bit lower than the note that comes before it. Right, so it almost kind of goes back and forth. Even here, it's the same. Uh, it's the same case, but I think it makes more of an impact in this one. So it almost sounds like we're maybe skipping different strings or whatever. But again, that open G is gluing these chords together, which is why this is a different kind of voicing than the normal E minor that you may have, you know, been been accustomed to, right? And remember. Focus on your right hand because once you kind of get to the spot, you don't really have to worry about your fretting hand so much, and you want a good even release from everything going on in your picking hand. Make sure you get individual control instead of just kind of like flicking your hand down, right? A lot of a lot of people when I see them maybe starting off playing this way, they'll play the first one and then they'll kind of speed up through the rest of the chord. We want a nice even slow way to do this and then eventually you can kind of bring the whole thing up and wrap it up so C major to D major or D minor E minor and then just one fret higher the first shape okay so this is gonna be the F chord now what I actually want to do is I want to make this, and this is going to be optional for you. If you want to just keep it with the open G, that's fine. I personally think this kind of sounds better if we use this chord voicing. Okay, all you do is you take your middle finger, which is already hanging out directly above where you might want to go, and stamp it down to make an F major seven chord. So now it would just be eight on the A string, which is an F, 10 on the D string, nine on the G string, 10 on the B string. Okay, I think it sounds really pretty, especially kind of juxtaposed against the other more open voicings. So, four chords in this key, just in order. This would be the one chord in the key of C, the two chord in the key of C, the three chord and the four chord. One, two, three, four, super basic, but it kind of sounds pretty because we're doing it in a little bit of an interesting way with a really relaxing uh, medium tempo finger style vibe going on. So one more time, C, four times. D minor, E minor, to the F major 7, and then end on a regular C major triad. Again, you can do this picking with anything with the open chords. If you like the sound of that better, again, by no means is one way better than another. You can do C major to D minor. minor, F. So it's all going to sound good. There's just kind of some different ideas that can kind of plant your, your picking hand and kind of get some really good practice in it. Now I want to do the exact same chords, but with a different pattern now too. So this is going to sound like this again. So more of kind of a, maybe like a bossa nova type style that we're gonna add a percussive hit to. But we're still gonna do the same principles of the first exercise. So everything in your left hand is gonna be exactly the same, all right? 3A, 5D, open G, 5B. The fingers that you use are gonna be in the exact same spot, but instead of going through it, we're gonna go up. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm hitting my thumb and then the rest of the chord. Okay, so A by itself, then D, G, and B together. It's a really good way to kind of counter practice what we were just doing, where everything is doing its own thing, to kind of do a, a, a thing where your fingers are more together and your thumb is playing the bass note. So A chord, A, A chord, and then I'm doing a percussive hit where I kind of bring that chord down into the string set, right above where they were just hitting. Now, if you get your fingernail on the string, it makes more of a click instead of a, a hit. There's a, there's a little bit of a difference between how you hit it. Again, you can even do it 
I see some people do it like that to kind of get it up. A lot of different ways you can do it. I personally just like coming down for that percussive click. To the next chord. So really kind of two different ways to do the same chord progression, but really kind of drastically different results as far as how it sounds and kind of the, the vibe that it's putting off. So that's why the technique of how you play fingerstyle is important. There's not just one way to play fingerstyle, even if it's the same strings that we're using, same chord voicings. How you choose to play it is just as an important part in the arrangement of a song as choosing the proper chords to do it, right? So you can kind of use this stuff for really any chord progression you want. I just think this is a cool one because it's easy to do. It's maybe an intro into uh, bar chord voicings, if that's something that you're interested in kind of getting along to. Eventually, you maybe already know it, that's cool too. And uh, I just think it's like a fun exercise that sounds pretty musical. So anyways, let me know what you guys think, what you guys want to see more of, and make sure to click the other videos surrounding me and check out the other stuff on Guitar Control. We've got playlists with uh, other videos that I've done, other videos of other incredible great instructors they have on the channel here. And like I said before, uh, leave your feedback as far as what you want to see more of. If you want to see more finger style stuff, if you want to see more blues stuff, uh, just let us know and we'll make it happen. So I'll see you guys later.